G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be going through my top 10 players in the AFL and yes this may be a familiar concept to you, Young King Cookson did the exact same thing on his channel a couple weeks ago so go check that out, got to give him credit, it's a great idea so I thought I'd put forward my list of 10. Before I get into it make sure if you're new to the channel you go and hit subscribe, really appreciate that and go and check out our latest podcast, True Footy Podcast 48 going through a season, season preview and uh, while I've got you here as well let me know what you think of this new Freddie Mercury mustache I'm trialing so far the missus hasn't made me shave it yet but let's crack into the top 10 what I'm going to do is start from the player I think is the 10th best in the competition and I'm going to put up a little FIFA ultimate team card because frankly I just love doing this and it's a nice little visual aid for you as I go through my list I'm going to give him a rating out of 100 wouldn't take that too seriously it's just a bit of fun um, as I said I kind of just like making them anyway but to kick off First up is in 10th spot, my beloved Jeremy McGovern from the West Coast Eagles. Now I'm sure not everyone necessarily agrees with the notion that McGovern is the best key back in the league. Personally, I thought Dylan Grimes had a better year last year what with Alex Rand going down, which I've kind of said a lot on the channel. Um, and Harris Andrews is emerging as someone just about as good as Jeremy McGovern. But I think for me, he gets the nod based on his longevity. He has been all Australian key back four years in a row, which kind of just asserts his dominance as one of the best in the game and I have him as the best defender in the game as you know he's strong defensively he's a brilliant intercept marker but I also one of my favorite things about him is he actually is pretty good at setting up play with his long kicks he's not amazing but for a key back he's pretty damn good he's super tough and consistent obviously played in that grand final with like kidneys full of blood and broken ribs and whatever it was uh, for me, he cracked my top 10 in the competition. Next up in ninth spot, I've got a GWS boy in Lockie Whitfield, who really emerged in 2019 as one of the best players in the competition. Now, we know he was a former number one draft pick taken in 2012, and he was kind of looked at as a defender midfielder, but he really sort of reinvented his game in 2019 as a high half forward who marks up the ground. And he's one of the most damaging footballers in terms of his ball use as well, which is a huge asset going inside 50. He's one of the very best at it. On top of that, he had the ball 27 times a game in 2019. And when you've got one of the best ball users in the league, getting that much of the ball, uh, that's a hugely de uh, devastating combination. So for me, based on an amazing 2019 season, Lockie Whitfield cracks my top nine. In eighth spot, I have got recently appointed Bulldog skipper Marcus Bontempelli. Now, for a number of years, Bontempelli has been like the heir apparent. He and Cripps and someone maybe like Josh Kelly have been sort of looked at as the next big three. And I think in 2019, Marcus Bontempelli fully arrived as one of the elite mids in the competition. And he capped that off with winning the Coaches Award last year, which for me is actually probably the best award we have in the league. The MVP is great, but it's not perfect. It's kind of a popularity contest and it's kind of not really based on actual performances. And the, the Brown low obviously is voted on the umpire by the umpires. I don't necessarily agree with all their decisions. Uh, and if they don't look at the stats as well, I kind of don't find that compelling. And there's also more votes in the coaches award. I'm kind of ranting here, but long story short, I think that is the best award we've got. And for him to win that is a huge feather in his cap. Bont really is one of those prototypical modern inside mids. He's six foot four and athletic, <laughs> athletic, not aesthetic, or depending on what you're into, um, as fuck. And I think he was ranked six in the league for inside 50s last year. And when he's also one of the mo most damaging ball users in the league, I said that about Whitfield, but Bont and Pelly is really good as well. Um, that's a dangerous combination and he's a great inside mid. He probably will be one of the best players in the competition one day, but for me, he's just bumped himself up to eighth spot. In seventh spot, I've got a player that's often compared to Bont and Pelly because they're from the same draft. They're just about as good as each other in my opinion and they're both amazing inside mids who are good from a young age and of course I'm talking about Pat Cripps who emerged in the scene in 2014 was his first playing season and I think in his second season he broke the clearance record or some sort of clearance record and that just shows what an absolute physical beast he is. I think he, he's 196 centimeters which uh, puts him in, he's, he's the tallest midfielder in the game. I don't know if Fife's height stats are updated or whatever but I'm pretty sure no one's going to have Cripps in terms of height. He's an unbelievable player, he's a huge Huge clearance beast as I've touched on. He's been carrying Carlton pretty much since he started playing football, which is crazy effort. Um, and then last year, I think he broke the record for most Brownlow votes 
after five rounds in a crap team for him to finish bottom, th uh, sorry, <laughs> top three in the brown low last year. That's an amazing effort. It really speaks to the player that he is. So again, he's like Bond. He's probably going to be in the next couple of, maybe in the next three or four years, probably emerge as one of the absolute best players in the game. In sixth spot, I have got Maxi Gorn, recently appointed Melbourne captain, which really speaks to his leadership in addition to being a fantastic player. And it really kind of is a golden era for Rux at the moment with the fact that I'm going to have Gorn, Gorn and Grundy in my top 10, but I'll touch on Grundy later. But I mean, this guy is an absolute freak. 208 centimeters, averages 40 hitouts a game. He's good around the ground. He's a good bloke as well. Not that that really comes into this. Look, he's just been one of the best rucks in the game for quite a number of years, really. And I don't think anyone's going to have too strong an argument against Max Gorn being my sixth best player in the competition. Number five, I've got the infamous Buddy Franklin. And of course, if this guy was in the peak of his career right now he'd probably be my number one he only played 10 games last year scored 27 goals which is a good return but I think because he's been out and he's also you know suffered a few injuries recently people might have just sort of backed off on thinking about how good he is uh, we kind of discriminate against older players once they sort of reach that age and get injured but in his previous few seasons he hit 57 goals in 19 games which is a great effort and then I think he had 70 odd and 80 odd the years before that so you know he's still quite a prolific goal scorer and of course, it's not just goals that Buddy Franklin adds to his team. He's amazing around the ground, generating scoring opportunities from basically nothing. He kicks ridiculous goals. I don't really need to sell you, Buddy Franklin. But for me, he's still in the top five players in the league. And I think he's fit this year based on all the reports. So I would look at him for having a big season um, should Sydney's midfield be able to produce enough ball for him. But uh, we'll see how that goes. The fourth best player in the competition in my eyes is Collingwood's Brody Grundy. Now, a couple of years ago, there was a really good debate about Gorn versus Grundy, who's actually better. But I think 2019 was the year Grundy stood up being a couple of years younger and emerged as the best player in the game. Best ruck. Sorry, best ruck in the game. Now, like Gorn, he's immense in the ruck. He averages 43 hitouts a game, or at least he did last year. And on top of that, he's getting the ball 21 times a game and almost like a midfielder around the game, around the ground as well, rather. And he's kind of cemented himself last year in the absence of Tom Mitchell as the absolute new fantasy pig. And that really speaks to his consistency of production, which is absolutely huge. It's hard to split him and Gorn, but I think Grundy just has the edge and being a few years younger as well, that is a massive plus. Now we're down to the final three and I do need to sort of put a little disclaimer. It's very, very hard to split these three. In third spot, I've got Richmond's Dustin Martin. Now, after a 2018 in a year where Richmond played really well, I thought Dustin didn't quite, well, he certainly didn't reach the heights of the previous year, which saw him win um, a record at the time. No, it's still the record actually for most Brownlow votes in a season. Uh, but in 2019, he kind of re-emerged as that sort of dominant player and he's obviously effective in the midfield. He's super strong, super athletic, he's fast and most devastatingly, he kicks goals like stupid goals. He's ridiculously talented forward as well. He's, I think in the last three years, he's hit over 30 goals a season. Hit goals? I don't know, kick goals, you know what I'm saying. There is a lot of talk about him recently potentially winning a Coleman and a Brownlow in the same year. Personally, I think that's ludicrous. He's never going to kick 65 goals and win the Brownlow. It's just not going to happen, but he is one of the most talented players in the league in terms of equally adept forward and through the midfield. He's super talented. If anyone has him ranked as the best player in the competition, it's hard to argue with him, but for me, I've just got them in third spot. In second spot, as my second best player in the competition, I've got Fremantle's Nat Fife. Now, the player that Fife was in 2015 when he won the Brownlow was an absolute sight to behold, and he hasn't really recaptured that form up until maybe 2019. And as a result, the media's kind of gone off him. Obviously, he's had injury problems. I think he had a like, bruised sternum for a while. I think he broke his leg in that time as well, which would impact him heavily. Uh, he's just really struggled with his fitness. But what we've seen when he is playing games consistently, that he's one of the most dominant inside mids in the competition. Last year, despite not getting much attention prior to the Brownlow medal by the media, and, and that includes me, I didn't necessarily think he was a big shout for the Brownlow last year. He won it in an absolute canter over a fast-finishing danger field. I mean, you know, the sort of player he is he's a high flying inside mid which is a really rare combination for a guy who's uh, you know a six foot three six foot four inside mid who's an absolute clearance beast he's also out leaping people because he's such an athletic freak we know he's won two brownlow medals and he's had adversity in that time which is ridiculous effort there's a chance that he actually will be one of the first players i think probably the first player 
to maybe retire with three or four Brownlow medals. Like Dusty Martin, there is a strong argument that Fife is the best player in the competition, and I totally don't really have a strong argument against that, but for me, he's just edged by one person in particular. That brings me to my number one player in the competition right now by an absolute feather, Patrick Dangerfield of the Geelong Football Club. And I know, I don't think that many people actually really hold this view. It seems like in the West, people believe it's five, or at least Fremantle fans anyway. Uh, and then in, in Victoria, I think Dusty is kind of sort of heralded as the man. But for me, I think Dangerfield is probably my favorite out of the three. My explanation for picking Danger is fairly simplistic. It's just that simply I think he's the most devastating out of the three when he's on form. I mean, the guy's been up there as one of the best players in the competition for some time, and he's probably been the most consistent out of this trio. In his Brownlow year, I think at the time it was a Brownlow record, right, for most votes in a single season. When Dusty won it the next year, Danger wasn't that far behind him. In 2019, of course, uh, he was my favorite to win the Brownlow, and he finished second narrowly after a massive finish to this season. Look, for me, he is simply the most exciting explosive player in the competition. His ability to turn a normal sort of center clearance situation to a goal scoring opportunity within just a couple of seconds is unmatched. And I'd say it's probably the best since Judd in that regard. Like Dusty, he's really good at hitting the scoreboard, which both those guys have over five. I think in the last couple of years, he's hit over 25 goals a season. And I think the year before that, it was over 45 goals. And I think that's something the other two haven't quite achieved. Like I said, though, separating those three players is pretty subjective. And as a result, you've probably noticed I've put the them all as rating of 92 in my AFL FIFA rating so I don't really have an argument for splitting them other than pretty much what I've said. Overall I think Danger's impact on the game slightly shades the other two but let me know in the comments guys we've come to the end of the video and I'm interested in your top 10 and let me know what you thought of my top 10 as well. As you've probably noticed we have been churning out content as it approaches the start of the season, like I alluded to before, we've done a season predictions podcast, which was an hour and 15 minutes, and it's gone really well, um, and I think people are enjoying it. Uh, before that, I've had the young King Cookson on as a guest. He's a fantastic YouTuber who I mentioned before, so if you're not aware of him, go check him out. And I'm also um, excited to sort of announce that I'm, I think we're going to get Caden McDonald on the True Footy podcast in a matter of weeks. I'm going on a holiday very shortly. Uh, but we're going to tee that up and that's going to be awesome. So if you haven't heard of him, you're living under a rock, uh, but go check out his channel as well because he's a very talented man. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.